So I did an analysis in the early 2000s. So I took one fast food restaurant. I told you there there were 20 of them going up to, uh, you know, I drive from Tennessee to Philadelphia. And so I'd pass them going up and I'd pass them going down. And out of that 20, there was one at 54th and Market, Philadelphia, that had enough volume to justify its infrastructure and staff. Yeah. All the others were empty. And there was one in Bolivar that right. was and empty meaning, all meaning, year meaning long. They're, they're burning cash, they're cash furnace. Right. They they were running a hundred to a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in overhead and they had no business. Yeah. And I finally concluded it's it's a laundry. Yeah. They're laundering money through it. And then, you know, when you launder money through that, you get a huge sm- stock market uptick. And and it was a stock market fraud combined with the laundry. If you read Black Money by Michael Thomas, you'll understand how the game works. But it was yeah. but here's the thing. If you're trying to run a legitimate restaurant where you have to sell it for more than it costs you to make it, you you have to compete against people who don't have to sell it for more than, a, you know. Right. 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 You're competing with people who have a, the equivalent of no cost. Right. How do you do that? And when I first got to Hickory Valley, I would drive around with some of the farmers and we would talk about it. And they would tell me that they were assuming those corporate guys were smarter than they were because they... You know, they no. couldn't make their business work economically because those no. guys were smarter. I said, no, those guys are cheating. They're cheating. Be... <laughs> They're cheating. But here's what I just saw on my latest trip. So now I'm in Wisconsin. I drove all across Tennessee, but I came and I was going through a lot of rural areas. I am seeing, and I'm going to look into it, I'm seeing Sunoco or other gas stations, but Sunoco is the big one, building big, beautiful, expensive, sophisticated gas stations in rural areas that can't possibly justify that market is like, where's right. this money coming from? Right. You see it all What's over. The game? You just got to feel your eye for it everywhere. It's unbelievable. This is an economy where it's extremely hard for small business and small farms who have to be economic in the marketplace to deal with the tsunami of, of government money. And the reports from all around the world, I just sent you a report we got from France, um, their bankruptcies are skyrocketing. Oh. So this is a, a fundamental sea change in the economy. 26 governors will not comply with WHO tyranny. They and we must say no to the UN's power grab as well. What's up? On August 29th, a majority of the nation's governors declared in response to the, the World Health Organization's recently adopted treaty amending its international health regulations and another pandemic uh, related one still under negotiation. We will not comply. It's really interesting. If you look at what's been accomplished the last two years, Senator Ron Johnson, who has done an amazing job and a whole group of activists trying to warn people about the who, and then you have Republican governors, treasurers, AGs, and state legislators. So you have people like Bud Halsey and Kathy Edmondson who were on to this early two years ago. People looked at them like they had two heads. You know, if you listen to their reports of trying to warn people and do this a couple of years ago, John, yeah. no one would listen. And now suddenly, boom, you just, you know, it's going right up the S curve and people are realizing we got to stop this. And remember, as you and I said, enforcement comes down to the sheriff level, comes down to the county level. Right. So the involvement right. of governors here is, is that's hugely significant because ultimately the enforcement job is going to come down to the sheriff. And if the governors aren't behind it, you're in trouble. What all the Republican people you talk to who are really leading on freedom in the state area, what they tell you is if they have Republicans in the White House, they're much better off. Yeah. yeah. And that's a fact. I don't doubt that. Right. I don't doubt and that part of second. it is, if if you're these guys, whether it's the governors, the treasury, you're fighting a tsunami of fiscal stimulus that's taking it the other way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why the election is a pork fight. You're fighting and layer over- upon layer upon layer right. of bureaucrats and NGOs and programs and right. hearing right. committees. It's just all going in that direction. I don't right. doubt that for one second. 